So here are some correlations that we often see uh, in the markets, uh, and uh, this will impact forex trading. Let me explain now. Now, commodities are priced in U.S. dollars, and commodities tend to go up when the U.S. dollar goes down. So, for example, oil goes up and the U.S. dollar goes down, gold goes up and the U.S. dollar goes down, oil, USD, uh, XAU, USD. So, for example, when oil goes up and the U.S. dollar goes down, what you would do is you can short the USD Canadian pair. Now, you know, you, you, you buy up the loonie because your oil uh, is positively correlated to the Canadian dollar. Now, the next correlation that we see is usually a commodities up cycle could signal the economy expanding, which is really uh, good for the stock market. So, uh, stock markets here uh, refer to, uh, of course, the main stock markets and also the emerging market economies. So, uh, you see something whereby, you know, where stock markets are going up, you see the USD yen pair uh, going up because people are borrowing against the yen, the low yielding yen, in order to buy stocks. Next, we see uh, rising bond markets are uh, correlated to uh, lower interest rates. And lower interest rates are always good for the stock markets. Uh, for example, you see uh, a lot of uh, cases where uh, central banks are not actually lowering interest rates. You see uh, quantitative easing in Japan, Europe, and many other countries to reduce interest rates, which then pushes uh, up the uh, stock market, essentially. Okay, uh, these are some examples of correlations that we see in the markets, uh, and uh, related to Forex, uh, for example, you know, commodities are priced in US dollars, and commodities tend to go up when the US dollar goes down. So you see when oil goes up, when gold goes up, the US dollar goes down. Now, since uh, the uh, Canadian dollar loony is positively correlated to oil, you see when oil goes up, the loony goes up, so it Whenever oil goes up, what you want to do is really go and sell the USD Canadian dollar pair. Uh, the next correlation that we see is uh, a commodities up cycle could, of course, signal that the economy is expanding, which is good for the stock markets. And when the stock markets go up, what do you do? What you would do is you would buy the US dollar yen pair, USD JPY pair, or even cross the commodity uh, currencies, which with the uh, Japanese yen, such as uh, the Kiwi yen or even the Aussie yen. Now, rising bond markets and lower interest rates are good for the stock market. You see a situation now that we have where there's a lot of banks that are uh, lowering uh, interest rates or even going to full-blown quantitative easing. And when they do this, when they're printing more money or buying more assets, it's good for the banks. It's good for the stock market because now they are giving the banks the capacity to borrow again and to expand the economy, which should affect a lot of companies in that particular country, which leads to higher stock markets, which also leads to uh, the rising commodity uh, currencies. And uh, what you see the phenomena in uh, 2016, and it all started since 2015, is oil started to get really correlated to the stock markets. You could see, uh, and, and, and this was easily explainable, although it wasn't obvious initially. You see what happens is, when uh, oil tends to go down, uh, yes, it does create a situation where inflation uh, is improved, but here's what happens. As oil goes down and down, the earnings for the oil companies uh, turn out to be extremely bad. And when this happens, you can see that uh, this will affect the stock index, like the S&P 500. You know, as the earnings go south, then you could see a situation whereby the, uh, this will actually pull down the S&P 500 and pull down the entire stock market. And, okay, this is the step one. Now, in step two, as these companies have lower and all lower earnings, mean, guess what? They now can't pay the banks that they borrowed from. And if they can't pay the banks that they borrowed from, this may trigger a default on banks. Again, affecting the S&P 500, causing it to go down. So uh, you have to be really uh, cognizant of all these issues when you're trading the market. Also in 2016, we have a situation where bad economic news is actually good for the stock market. Now that's a weird one, the, the reality, but the reality is this. In 2016, people are really uh, expecting the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. But the Federal Reserves uh, will probably not 
raise interest rates or they would reduce the frequency of raising interest rate rather if they see a bad economic number. So you see this uh, really confusing situation where a bad economic result is actually good for the stock market.